adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring the entire Nelson family, Ozzie, Harriet, David, and Ricky. Here is Ozzie, who plays the part of Ozzie Nelson. And of course, his lovely wife, Harriet, as Harriet Nelson. The older of the Nelson boys, David, appears as David Nelson. And his younger brother, the irrepressible Ricky, played by Ricky Nelson. The Nelson's next door neighbor, Thorny, is played by Don DeFore. Mailman. Oh, good. Anything there for me? Well, they seem to be for both of us. Here, I'll split them with you. Oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> what are you complaining about? You haven't got any envelopes open. Oh, it's a thank you note from the Dunkles. They loved our Christmas present. Oh, that's good. This is rather interesting. It's from the bank. They think it's about time we open a new savings account for next Christmas. It seems like a good idea. Yeah. With what, though? Hmm. Must be from Doc Williams. Smells like ether. You have the most vivid imagination. Yeah. Oh, they love the ashtray we sent them for Christmas. Oh, that's good. Ashtray? Well, what did we send them? Well, I bought it for a candy dish. <laughs> I guess you could use it for an ashtray, though. Well, what do you care as long as they like it? Any mail for me, Mom? No, I'm afraid not, dear. Were you expecting any? Well, not necessarily. I was just hoping for a late Christmas check. Oh, well, I'm afraid you're out of luck. Oh, speaking of Christmas, have you guys written your thank you notes yet? Well, sure. We wrote Grandma Nelson last week. Don't you remember? And Aunt Lloyd? And we thanked Uncle Al and Aunt Kay over the telephone. Well, I still think they'd like to receive a thank you note from you. You know, people like to save those things. How about Iggy Schwartz? He sent you a present, didn't he? Well, gee, Pop, I see him every day at school. Well, I still don't think it'd do any harm to send him a little note. Of course not. He was thoughtful enough to send you a Christmas present. You know, the fact that you see people every day doesn't make any difference. They still like to receive a little note from you. You mean I have to write one to you and Pop and David? No, not necessarily. But I think it'd be nice if you sent one to Iggy. Well, it does seem kind of silly writing a note to a person you see every day. Oh, I don't think so. Hey, I just thought of something. I don't have any writing paper or envelopes. Oh, that's a pretty feeble excuse. There's plenty of writing paper in the den. Mm. Just grasping at straws. <laughs> We might as well do them right after breakfast and get them over with. Sure. And have the letters written by the time you sit around here talking about it. I still don't think I should write Iggy. You think I'm crazy? He'll be very happy to receive it. I don't even know what to write him. Well, we have a book of etiquette in there somewhere. I'm sure there'll be some good suggestions in that. I'll tell you what I'll do, Rick. If I have to breakfast as soon as you finish there, you go in the den and start writing the letter. And I'll be in a few minutes and give you a hand with it. Well, thanks, Pop. Would you write Mr. Thornberry about the fruitcake he sent you? Oh, uh, Mr. Thornberry, uh, well, I, uh, I didn't send him a, a formal note. What kind of a note did you write him? Oh, uh, well, I, I didn't uh, exactly write him any kind of note. I thanked him in person. I thanked Iggy Schwartz in person. Well, uh, yes, I know, but that's different. See, Mr. Thornberry is our neighbor. He, he lives right next door, and I see him every day. Well, I see Iggy every day. Well, oh, yes, I, I know you do, but, see, that's completely different. Uh, uh, see, Mr. Thornberry uh, gave me a fruitcake. I give up. What does that prove? Well... Yeah, Pop, what does that prove? <laughs> well, it's... I mean, I mean, your, your mother... Come on, Pop, we'll ride them together. <laughs> help this book of etiquette in. Well, uh, there must be something there on thank you notes, isn't there? Yeah, there's a sample in here. Well, listen to it. Dear Ethel, I just can't tell you how delighted I am with the simply darling brooch you sent me. Thank you, dear. It was so sweet of you. Affectionately, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just an example to give you an idea. Not you. You have to fit it into the circumstances. Uh, how are you doing, Dave? Oh, pretty good, I guess. I'm almost finished. How about you? Uh, well, it's, uh, it's, uh, coming. I... Dear Thorny. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I always kind of like to work it out in my head first. I... I think I got mine now, Pop. You want to hear it? Hey, it's pretty quick. Dear Iggy, 
I just can't tell you how delighted I am with the simply darling book you sent me. Thank you, dear. It was so sweet of you. Affectionately, Mary. Mary? Sure. You don't think I'm going to sign my name to a thing like that, do you? Hey, well, look, Rick, you're, you're making a, a big deal out of this. All you have to do is tell Iggy in your own words how much you enjoyed the book. Yeah, but I didn't enjoy it. I already read it. Look, if it's so tough, why don't you write some of the other letters? Write one to Aunt Florence. Yeah, that's a good idea. David? Yeah? What will I say? Look, I'm trying to write a letter, too. Uh, what did Aunt Florence send you? A sports shirt. Okay, take this down. Dear Aunt Florence. I've already got that, Pop. Okay. Uh, dear Aunt Florence, thanks for the sports shirt. It fits fine. Thanks, Pop. The only trouble is it doesn't fit fine. <laughs> In that case, you still say, thanks for the beautiful sport shirt, it fits fine. Or else find something else nice to say about it. The sleeves are too long, the collar's too big, the whole thing just doesn't fit, it's too big. You could still write and say it fits fine, just don't tell her I'm the one it fits. <laughs> what David means is you're actually thanking the person for being so thoughtful. Yeah, but it's different with you and David. You're thanking somebody for something you like. Well, not necessarily. As a matter of fact, I don't especially care for fruitcake. Yet I'm writing a letter to Mr. Thornberry out of courtesy to thank him and tell him how much I've enjoyed it. I thought you haven't tasted it yet. Well, I haven't. Sounds to me like you're writing down a bunch of stuff that isn't true just to make somebody feel good. <laughs> you're missing the whole point of this, son. If it'll make you feel any happier, I'll go out to the kitchen and I'll eat some of the fruit cake. I'll come back and write the letter later. Pa? Yeah? No ditching out. We're in this thing together. <laughs> Dear Iggy. I'm going to write mine upstairs. What's the matter with you? I'm trying to write Uncle Ben, and I wrote Dear Thorny twice, and now I just wrote Dear Iggy. <laughs> well, how are the notes coming? Oh, uh, pretty good, thanks. Uh, do you know where that fruitcake is that Thorny gave me for Christmas? I thought you didn't care for fruitcake. Well, I, I don't especially, but I, I don't want to eat it. I just want to taste it. Oh, I think it's in the cupboard over there. I don't see it. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. Here it is right here. Oh, no, here it is right here. No, this is the fruitcake you got from Thorny for Christmas. Still has his card on it. Well, this has Thorny's card on it, too. How come I got two fruitcakes from him? Well, that's probably the one he gave you last year. Uh, I don't remember Thorny's giving me a fruitcake last year. Well, sure, don't you remember? You said the same thing about the one he gave you the year before that. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. Doesn't that seem awful strange, a man giving me fruitcake three years in a row? Well, some people just have a hard time deciding what they want to buy for Christmas presents. Well, I mean, I can understand that if it's a business acquaintance, but you think a man would use a little more thought selecting a, a Christmas gift for his best friend. I don't know why. His best friend didn't even remember what he got. Well, I still say it's silly to have two fruitcakes in the house. Four. Mr. Miller at the market gave us one, and the milkman gave us one. <laughs> How about that? That Thorny sure has an original mind. And after all the thought I put into his gift. I thought you gave him a jar of hard candy. Well, I did. I said to myself, uh, what would I like to have somebody give me for Christmas? And I decided on a jar of hard candies. I've liked them ever since I was a small boy. Everybody likes them. Well, maybe Tony likes fruitcake. That's the reason he gave you one. Uh, besides, I had a hard job finding one with, with a lot of peppermint sticks in it. Well, I don't know, dear. I'm sure Thorny meant well. Well, I still say it shows a lack of originality to give a man the same gift year after year after year. Have you felt the weight of this thing? It must weigh a ton. Well, it's a year old. Oh! Oh! oh, did you hurt yourself? I think I broke my toe. Oh! Oh, come now. Can't hurt that bad. By the way, did you finish writing your thank you note to him? A thank you note? Are you kidding, Harriet? He probably tells his secretary to order a couple of dozen of these things and send them to everybody he knows. Well, it wouldn't hurt you to write him a thank you note anyway. I'm sorry, but I'm not that much of a hypocrite. 
My best friend sends me a fruitcake three years in a row. What's Christmas coming to? Boy, this is more work than I thought. Oh, good. You all finished? Yes, ma'am. I have one of them done. See if you like this. Dear Iggy, thanks for the wonderful book. It was wonderful. Think that's too flowery? <laughs> no. Uh, uh, Rick, I've been thinking over this whole situation about the book Iggy gave you, and I've come to the conclusion that if you really don't like it, you've got a perfect right to change the letter. Mm, gee, I have, about seven times. <laughs> I, I know, but what I mean is I don't think there's any necessity for you to sit down and write a bunch of flowery stuff when the boy doesn't even take the trouble to pick out a gift that you can enjoy. You don't have to make up another letter? Well, that's something between you and your conscience, son. Just remember there's an old proverb, and it stood the test of time pretty well. Honesty is the best policy. Wait, you mean you're not going to write a thank you note to Thorny? Harriet, there are some things it's better to tell a person right to his face. I'm going to find Thorny and tell him exactly what I think of his fruitcake. <laughs> Get right to the point, Thorny. Uh, what I wanted to talk to you about was the fruitcake you gave me for Christmas. Wait a minute, Oz. You mean you came all the way down here to thank me? Oh, you shouldn't have done it. However, I am glad you liked it. I get them every year at the Emporium. Aren't they delicious? Oh, well, yes, uh, uh, if you like fruitcake. Holy smoke, Oz, it just occurred to me. I haven't thanked you for those hard candies you gave me. Oh, oh. That's okay. I, I'm, I'm glad you like them. Like them? Well, I love hard candies. And what a wonderful selection. The limes and the cherries and those little red striped ones. Oh, uh, those are the peppermint sticks. Oh, they're terrific. Kind of bite your tongue. Yeah. Honestly, Oz, I don't know how to thank you. It's such a wonderful gift. Oh, well, gee, thanks, Thorny. Oh, sure. Like I told Catherine. I, Catherine, I said, Christmas just wouldn't be Christmas without those wonderful, delicious hard candies Ozzy gives me every year. <laughs> You mean uh, I've given you those before? Well, for the past three years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, know, you couldn't have picked a better gift. You know, I hate to sound slushy or sentimental, but she isn't it nice when two fellows have such a warm relationship that they just instinctively know the right gift to buy for each other? Oh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 you're, you're right there, Tony. I'm sure glad you like the fruitcake, guys. Oh, yeah, thanks a lot. Well, I think I'd better be getting along, Thorny. I'll, I'll see you a little later. Okay. Wait a minute, Oz. What's the matter? You're limping. Is something wrong with your foot? Oh, uh, nothing serious. I just dropped a rock on it. <laughs> oh, no. Don't tell me you're still writing that thank you note to Iggy Schwartz. Will you stop bothering me? I'm having enough trouble as it is. What are you making such a big deal out of it for? Pop told you what to do. Just write something diplomatic and sign it. What's so hard about that? That's not what Pop told me to do, wise guy. It is so. I was right there. That's what he said at first, but later on he changed his mind. When was that? Right after he dropped the fruitcake on his toe. <laughs> what did he tell you to write? He just said to keep in mind that honesty is the best policy. Okay, keep it in mind and write the letter. That's what I was doing when you came in. I got it practically finished right now. You want to hear it? No, thanks. I've got a whole chapter to read in Man and Civilization. Big scholar. Can it say anything in there about being courteous to your own family, your own brother, your own flesh and blood? That's a different subject entirely. This is a study of man and his relationship to his environment, starting with prehistoric man. Speaking of prehistoric man, Okay, okay, I'm gonna get a haircut this afternoon. I didn't say a word. Dear Iggy, I am writing this letter to let you know honestly and frankly. Honestly and frankly are underlined. Fine. And in capital letters. Go ahead. To let you know honestly and frankly what I think of the book he sent me for Christmas. Oh, what happened? You guys been confined to quarters? No, I'm finishing my letter to Iggy Schwartz. I was just reading it to David. Yeah, and I'm trying to study. You want to hear it, Pa? Oh, uh, yes, uh, maybe I'd better. Dear Iggy, I'm writing this note to let you know honestly and frankly, honestly and frankly are underlined. 
And in capital letters. Uh, uh, <laughs> you haven't written anything there that might hurt Iggy's feelings, I hope. Oh, heck no. I just say that I don't like the book. <laughs> now, uh, Rick, that's not very diplomatic. That's pretty blunt. Well, I thought you told me to be honest and frank. Well, uh, yes, I, I did. But uh, after thinking it over, I've uh, sort of uh, changed my mind uh, uh, again. I mean, you should be honest and frank, but also diplomatic. Are we back to being diplomatic again? Oh, uh, hello, dear. I, I just uh, explained to Rick. Just what exactly does diplomatic mean, Pa? Oh, well, it just means being uh, tactful and sneaky. And, uh, <laughs> Well, uh, for instance, suppose you should meet a woman and she's wearing a ridiculous, silly-looking hat. Well, you wouldn't come right out to her and say, Oh, uh, uh, that reminds me, Harriet. Reminds you of what? Uh, well, uh, I'll uh, tell you about it later. Anyway, <laughs> I think, Rick, you just ought to write a real nice letter to Iggy and tell him you enjoyed reading the book and you appreciate his thoughtfulness. Okay, Pop, if you say so. I think that's best, too, dear. Okay, Ma, if you say so. I agree with Mom and Pop. Okay, David, if you say so. <laughs> well, let's get out and let the boys get to work. Okay, dear, if you say so. <laughs> well, come on, little man, get back to work. There's just one thing I want to know. What's that? What happened to that honest and direct approach of yours? Oh, well, uh, to be perfectly frank with you, I, I ran into Thorny down at the drugstore, and before I had a chance to say anything, he started to tell me how much he enjoyed the wonderful hard candies I gave him. Oh, wasn't that nice? Yeah, it, it seems I, I just sort of hit on something he especially liked, so I didn't have the heart to tell him I didn't care for the fruitcake. Well, I should hope not. That had been a terrible thing to do. Yeah. You know, uh, he's right. Uh, that hard candy makes a wonderful Christmas gift. I wish somebody had given me some. Why don't you ride downtown with me and buy yourself some? Well, are you going downtown now? Yes, I'm going down to the Emporium and exchange a few things. Oh, Christmas gifts? They're just a few things. Well, say, here's an idea. Uh, maybe the Emporium has let me exchange the fruitcake Thorny gave me, you know, the one I didn't drop on my toe, for a jar of hard candies. Well, I'm sure they'd be glad to. Did he buy it there? Uh, yes, he, he said so. You know, isn't it funny that I should pick out something that, that Thorny's crazy about and he should buy something that I don't like? I guess it must be intuition or something, huh? I suppose so. What are you exchanging? Oh, just a few things. Well, uh, such as what? Well, the slip that Mother gave me is too small. And Clara Randolph gave me a sandwich plate I'd like in a different pattern. And Mary Dunkel gave me a pretty sweater that I'd like in a different color. Well, is that all you're exchanging? Yes, why? Oh, nothing. I'm just wondering. No, don't worry, dear. Everything you gave me is just perfect. Oh! <laughs> much trouble. I don't want to inconvenience you, but I would like to exchange this. Oh, it's no trouble at all. What is it? Oh, it's uh, one of your fruitcakes. Oh, 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 yes, of course. Was it damaged in some way? No, no, no. It's in perfect physical condition. It's uh, hard as a rock. <laughs> you mean the fruitcake was stale? Oh, no. Uh, in fact, it's very tasty. Uh, it, I imagine some people are very fond of fruitcake. Oh, uh, I am. My aunt makes delicious fruitcake. Oh, uh, well, uh, uh, good for her. Uh, <laughs> my mother, too, always made delicious fruitcake. But even as a small boy, I just never cared for fruitcake. I see. Would you like a credit on this, or did you say there was something else you'd like to exchange it for? Uh, well, uh, yes, I would like to exchange it for one of those large jars of the Gibraltar candy, that hard candy, the old-fashioned type. Oh, yes, we have that here. Th that, that's, that's it, yes. <laughs> Do you have your charger plate? My charger plate? There'll be a slight additional charge. The candy is $2 more than the fruitcake. <laughs> you like that? Is something wrong? No, uh, no. It's, uh, I, I don't have my uh, charger. Uh, here, I have my license. If oh, that's fine. Thank you. Name and address is right there. Mr. Ozzie Nelson, address. Oh, that's strange. 
Do you know Mr. Thornberry in your neighborhood? Well, yes, he's my next-door neighbor. Well, this is a coincidence. He was in here just a few minutes ago with a jar of candy just like that, and he exchanged it for a fruitcake. <laughs> How you doing, Dick? Uh, uh, Harriet, uh, this... I hate to say this, dear, but that's the silliest looking hat you've ever worn in your life. <laughs> it's bad enough that Thorny was two-faced and mealy mouthed but the thing that really burns me up is he got a two-dollar refund on my present. Think of that, Harriet. The hard candies cost two dollars more than the fruitcake. How do you like that? What's wrong with my hat? <laughs> Nothing. You, your hat is beautiful, Harriet. I, I was just kind of burned up at Thorny. Wait till I see that big faker. I was right the first time. A direct approach is the only way you can keep friends. Diplomacy is all right. If you ask me, there's nothing better than coming right out and telling the truth. Personally, if there's one thing I can't stand, it's a hypocrite. 